So welcome to today's MTD podcast. Uh, we're here at Mazak at their European headquarters in Worcester. Uh, I'm Paul Jones, the Managing Director and Founder of MTD CNC. Uh, and for this podcast, I'm joined by two gentlemen, Joe Reynolds from MTD CNC, and also Ian White, who's the General Sales Manager uh, from Mazak for the Laser Products, which is obviously the focus of this particular podcast. So, uh, gentlemen, welcome to the um, show. We'll probably start with yourself, uh, Ian. It's always good to get a bit of a, a background and a history as to um, as to our participants. So maybe could you tell us a little bit about yourself and your your uh, your history in terms of um, your product knowledge and so forth? Yeah. Okay. Good morning. Yes. Yeah, so as you said, my name is Ian White. I'm general manager of the uh, laser division here at, uh, at Mazak UK, covering the UK and, uh, and Ireland. And uh, I've been at Mazak for uh, just under five years now. But uh, before that, yeah, long experience in uh, in laser machines and sheet metal for, uh, yeah, about 20 years now, something like that. Okay, so lots, lots of experience. Um, uh, Joe, you've been involved with Mazak for some time as well, haven't you? Not just on the, on the, on the metal cutting side. You've obviously been quite in, involved with Ian recently on some of the new technologies. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a big market for them. Yeah, one thing I wasn't aware of is, is how old the technology is at Mazak, laser Maybe a lot of people don't realise how long they have been making laser machines. You, you, obviously, you know a lot more about this, Ian. But when, when I first saw a, a Mazat laser, it, I don't know, 10 years ago, but it goes back a lot further than that. Yeah, correct. Mazak have been making machines from the very start of production laser machines back in the early 80s. And, uh, and, and since then, yeah, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of innovations Mazak have been responsible for. Things like nozzle changes, but, Load and load of sheet automation and uh, and the torch changes. So you know some. And when you say you've been responsible, have, have you been the, the first to pioneer those those areas? Yes, yeah, Mazak were the first to pioneer those areas. You know, from almost the uh, the very start. Well, and how much has changed in that time? I know you've only been here yourself for, for about five years, but uh, you've got more experience, obviously, within within industry beyond that. Um, yeah, how much has things changed in laser cutting over the past couple of decades? Oh, it's uh, yeah, it's it's changed and still is at uh, at, at uh, yeah a, a very high pace. Uh, certainly, you know. When lasers first came out, there was uh, different types of resonator used. And even in recent times, the last five to 10 years, there's been large changes from CO2 machines to, uh, to fiber, and then more recently, DDL. Uh, so a big choice of, uh, of beam sources you can get nowadays. And then could we quickly touch on those three technologies and maybe some of the differences? I know we hear it a lot, and you talk about it every day. But for yeah. those that are listening, what, what are the differences between those three, uh, three that you mentioned? Well, for most people, when you're talking about the laser cutting, you're probably talking about a CO2 machine, and, and that's still the most prevalent, most common machine you, you see out there in the market. But uh, fibre laser cutting has brought big improvements. It's a solid-state beam source uh, with a fibre delivery system, so that means there's a lot less power used at the, the beam source. Uh, it also means it can cut a lot quicker. But because it's got a fibre delivery system on it, there's a lot less maintenance as well, so it gives a, a lot of big um, price savings for the end user and, uh, and, and maintenance savings. And then where does the DDL fit in then? DDL's a, a newer development. Uh, it's got a slightly different wavelength to, uh, to fibre and, and CO2, and it gives you, a, again, a power saving and, uh, and a cut quality improvement over the other methods. So if you had to pick three applications... Uh, ideally suited to each of those technologies, what would they be? Um, well, as I said, CO2, uh, traditionally, it, it's, um, it's very good at cutting thicker materials at, at very good high quality. Uh, fibre, of course, is, is pretty much taken over in the market now, and that's uh, renowned for speed, uh, uh, mainly, and, uh, and DDL is, is quality cutting. Okay, okay. So in terms of applications, you, I'm presuming you wouldn't use a DDL for some, some basic, you know, some basic uh, laser work. That's, that's for more premium products. Of course you could, but certainly the, the advantage and the reason you would choose DDL over the other uh, resonator sources is, is quality. And, and I counted 13 models in the range. Would that be about right, or have I missed any? Or That's an, unlucky, that's an unlucky number, so I'll change that. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, you, you, yeah, you could be right. Yeah, there's a, there's a large range of resonator sources, as I said, uh, different bed sizes, different ways of moving the head from, from flying optics to hybrid. But we also do a large range of tube machines and, uh, and 3D as well. Yeah, that often gets for, forgotten, doesn't it, the 3D? But, it, but it's, it's important, the tube cutting and what have you. No, definitely. It's a, it's a large market yeah, for, for bevel cutting or, or a different format of like automotive parts, etc. Our 3D range is very versatile as well. You can process 2D 
flat sheet on it and uh, 3D parts as well. You can also add a, a chuck system to it, so for, for tube processing as well, so for a, one of the most versatile lasers on the market, really. What, are you talking combination machine here, are we? It is a combination machine, I suppose you could uh, call it that, yes. Um, but certainly for, for laser cutting, there's no uh, punching capabilities on it, let's, let's, let's make that clear. But uh, yeah, from 2D sheet to 3D parts, uh, and you can also put tube on there as well. And in terms of um, the, the market cap or the market size in the UK, how, how many machines do you think are sold? Not necessarily Mazat, but as a whole, how many, how many it's, um, it's, machines? It's, it's quite a significant market. It's, it's difficult to uh, to put an exact figure on that. There's, there's no one particularly collating it. But uh, yeah, it'll be 150 plus per year flatbeds in the, within the UK. And, and from your market share perspective, is that growing? If you take that 150, are you... Are you are you really making progress with that product? I know it's been around a long time, but uh, you know, have you got a big market share? Oh, definitely, yes. As, as we said, Mazak have been making lasers since the early eighties, but um, certainly in the last five to ten years, Mazak have put a lot of investments not only into the machines themselves, but um, into the sales and support staff in each individual country, and and certainly in the UK. Yeah, that has resulted in a, in a big market share growth. Must help having this building, this facility. Oh, certainly, yeah, it's an excellent facility. So, yeah, we've, we've got several showrooms here, you know, a, a large amount of staff for uh, for support. So, yeah, yeah, it's definitely a useful facility. And, and coming more from a, a metal cutting background myself, when when you're selling one of those machines, as often customers come in here wanting demonstrations, they bring parts in, they ask you for chip to chip, you know, sorry, cycle times of those components, uh, different ways and methods of making them. Is that a very similar process on your side? Is there a lot of activity here at Worcester with people experimenting and trying to get the best out of what you do? Yes. And, you know, we've certainly used the facilities we've got here to, to the max. Yeah. Uh, different to quite a lot of uh, sheet metal uh, facilities. We have uh, CMM equipment, measurement equipment here as well. So uh, for companies that want to work very accurately, we can we can prove what the machine can do actually on site here in Worcester. And is there much crossover? So a gentleman or a lady might come and look at a vertical machining sensor and maybe they know you do lasers, maybe they don't. But what I'm trying to say is, you, have you got many customers that use both? You know, yeah, metal removal and laser. More than I would expect, actually. There's, um, there's a lot of uh, you know, OEM manufacturing companies that, of course, want to make the, the whole component and there's the sheet metal parts on it. There's solid machined parts. And, of course, they, they prefer to go to one supplier. Because well, so traditionally, when you go around machine shops, you do tend to find you go in a company and they have a discipline that they specialise at and that might be turning, it might be grinding, it might be fabrication. It's, it, it's, it is becoming more common where they, they are trying to combine those disciplines into not just into their business, but maybe by some of the technology that they can purchase as well that is very adaptable. Yeah. Um, so I suppose the fact you can, you can satisfy all areas must be a massive advantage to you. Oh, definitely. Yeah, it's something that's uh, yeah, it's useful for us and it's certainly useful for the end user. And the, the other factor here is uh, companies turn up and they're not really aware of what lasers can do as, as, as lasers have got uh, more higher power. For example, we have the 10 kilowatt on site here now. Uh, that can cut 35 millimeter material. So companies are maybe using machining or, or some sort of EDM to, to create that shape. And they, they see the versatility and, and power and quality the laser can do. And uh, that's a bit really commercially viable option to manufacture those parts. Yeah, and really if you look at the, the technology you offer here at Mads, like obviously DDR's been around, but you, you know better than me, three, four years. But you know, I know you've got the new control as well now. Yeah, there's increasing crossover from the machine tool technology onto the sheet metal side, and the, the control panel uses very similar you know, base technology to, to the machining side. So a Mazak have got the economies of scale. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a really powerful control system that's used on the latest generation machines. And does that help with the speed? Because one of the things looking at the smooth control on other machines within the range, yeah. they're, they're kind of boasting, you know, massive savings in, in, in or improvements in productivity. Some of these laser machines that we see around exhibitions, they are moving incredibly fast. Uh, to think that you can move quicker than that is, is quite mind blowing. But uh, it, does your control help with that? Are you right up there? Are you one of the fastest when it comes to the movement and the agility of the machine? Oh, yes. Cutting? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Of, of course, at, um, at, at a show, a laser will always, always draw a crowd because the the sparks and uh, yeah, the, the the speed of which it's, uh, it's it's cutting the metal. But yeah, comparing the, the new Preview G panel with the previous generation, uh, exactly the same resonator, the machine can process parts 15% faster than the previous. And that's, that's 
slightly faster acceleration within the machine, but it's mainly down to the processing power of the panel. I, th- I think what's really interesting for me, and one of the, the kind of probably the last things I'd like to try and explore is you mentioned about, uh, and we're seeing this a lot when engineers are visiting exhibitions, they're, they're, they're going online and they're, they're seeing different ways of doing things, which is like you've just mentioned, they may have cut something using a, a wire cut machine and now they can do it on, on, on your machine. Is there many other examples that you could give us where these changes are happening? Uh, well, yeah, it, it wouldn't necessarily be just, just flat material for that. Uh, as I said, you know, we do a range of tube machines as well. So uh, we, we do get a lot of people that are uh, machining, etc. tubes that uh, when they see what our, our, our Fabrigear tube laser can do, then that's uh, another good application of, uh, of how lasers can help. And, and I suppose the automation is a, is a big plus as well, isn't it? <laughs> Yes, yeah, with, with Industry 4.0, automation and, and measurement of what the machine can do, then uh, th- then yes, a large percentage of what we sell has got automation. Um, part picking is another new area, I suppose, for lasers. So, uh, yeah, we, we have three different part picking options. And would that be like suction that. and uh, what, 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 can you elaborate? Yes, yeah, suction or robots. Yeah, one of the largest challenges in this industry is that the laser can do a, a large amount of parts on one sheet. But of course, there's a manual element to, to actually remove those parts before the next, uh, the next sheet goes into cut. So part pickers uh, will automatically separate the parts from the scrap metal, uh, you know, increasing the, uh, the uptime of the machine. And just the final one for me is how, how are you doing? Is are sales good? Inquiry levels at a high level? It's it's very busy. Yes, no, it's uh, yeah. We've uh, experienced a record year last year, and uh, I, I don't foresee that you know carrying on moving forwards. Good stuff. I think it's been a, a fascinating insight into the world of of laser and sparks. Thank you very much for your time, Ian. And um, yeah, good luck with the uh, with the rest of the year. Thank, uh, thank and, you very uh, much. Thanks for everyone for listening to, to today's uh, MTV podcast. Don't forget to join us next week uh, on Monday, where we'll have another episode for you. Thanks, Ian. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the MTD podcast. If you found value in this episode, please subscribe and leave a rating and review. Find more episodes on MTD CNC.